Hi, I'm Sean Martin, president and founder of Donix Snowboards. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps I would take to create a custom snowboard graphic within uh, Inkscape. Inkscape is free vector graphic editing software that anybody can download. It is great for creating scalable images as well as adding photographic components to your artwork. So you can pretty much do anything you want. If you take the steps described in this video, it's going to reduce the time that it takes for you to create your artwork, as well as minimize the chance that we're going to reject it and say, hey, we need you to go back and do something else. I would suggest you take the 10 minutes or so to watch this video so that you can know what it is we need you to deliver us and how to get the artwork to that point. Um, first thing we're going to do is go over some of the uh, graphic requirements we have. And I will include a link to these requirements or this page below this video. Um, but number one is custom artwork should be submitted as an illustrator SVG or JPEG or TIFF file that is 150 dpi in RGB color. Now uh, Inkscape creates an SVG file so that's the uh, style of editor we're talking about. Any raster or JPEG or image components within your uh, file need to be this 150 dpi though so I'll, I'll talk about that briefly. Um, all text in your Illustrator or Inkscape, we probably need to update this, files must be converted to curves or outlines. So you need to uh, not leave it as a, uh, a text, you need to convert to curves or outlines so that when we open it, we don't have to have that font installed on our machine. Um, artwork must be rectangular in shape do not trim the artwork to the shape of a snowboard. If you do that, if it is trimmed and we cannot recover the artwork outside the shape of the board, we can't use the artwork. So we will send it back. Um, the template we're going to send you or you're going to grab is going to uh, include the rectangle that the artwork should fill anyways. So everything you need is going to be delivered to you and you'll know exactly where it goes. Artwork needs to be three inches longer than the board and one inch wider than the board at its widest point. Uh, the art, artwork should contain, the artwork should not contain any board outlines or drawings indicating the position of the board's inserts. So we want to be able to remove those easily if they are in there or you can remove them Generally, when you're using Illustrator or Inkscape, you're going to be able to leave those outlines intact. We just want them in a location that's easy for us to turn them off. Uh, and that's what it says. If the board outline is included in an Illustrator or Inkscape file, it must be a separate layer, layer called board outline or template or something like that. And the artwork has to be submitted in a vertical orientation with a tip at the top and the tail at the bottom. If you rotate the template, we no longer know which you intend to be the tip or the tail of the board. So please don't rotate the template. Leave it as we deliver it. So let's get started in Inkscape. I'm going to open the template file. Actually, let's go over here. Let's go. And here we go. So you're going you're gonna to get a template from us once we have completed all of the uh, um, sizing process with you. If you're anxious to get started and want to work on your graphic before we complete that process, on that uh, graphic page we were just on, you're going to see some board shape templates. These templates 
will match up with different models we make, but they're not going to be the same size or dimensions as yours. So you can start your artwork and get close with this. And then once we're finished with the, uh, the sizing process, you can ask us for a template and then you can reposition all your artwork to land on that template. Now, this is what the template looks like when you open it uh, in, in Inkscape. I'm going to set up a couple things in the document as far as the properties are concerned. I prefer to work in inches, which uh, this template is 14 and a quarter inches wide, 66 inches long. Units are inches. I want the display units also to be in inches because that's just the way I think. Um, now there's going to be some, uh, I don't know whether they're called panels or what they are, uh, components that are important to how, how I work within Inkscape and how you're going to do this. So we've got the align and distribute panel. I'm going to click on that and open it. We've got a, uh, a colors, gradients, strokes, that sort of thing. I'm going to open that one. Also going to open this layers panel and I'm going to open the objects panel as well. So I've got all of that stuff open. That's going to give you most of the tools or the tools that I like to work with in Inkscape. Now, uh, we want to turn this template into something that you can use, uh, but put on a separate layer and, and make it into an effective tool. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go object ungroup because right now it's a, it's a big old group. Now you see all of this stuff is in, in separate pieces. We want to turn this into kind of a, an overlay mask. We'll select all of this. We will unselect these boxes that represent the binding inserts. We're going to go to path and we're going to hit combine. Now the computer is going to think for a couple seconds here and once it's done we will put this box back where it was. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to align and distribute here. I'm going to make sure that I'm moving relative to the page. I'm just going to center it both horizontally and vertically. Now it's back where it was. I'm going to go back to this and reselect this and I'm going to hit path uh, and I want to go stroke to path is what I want. Then I want to select it, it, hold shift and select the rectangle and I want to go path and click on division. Now if we go and find our objects. Where is the objects here? Well, let's go object objects. There they are. Okay. So if we look at this, these are all the objects in our drawing. We've got, we can select each one of these. We've got a path and a path and a rectangle uh, and a couple other rectangles. We really want to actually delete this path and this path. This, I'm not even sure what it is, so I'm going to delete it as well. I now have all these rectangles. If you select this big rectangle, there's actually more to it. If you go to fill and fill it with something, it now fills everything outside the, the snowboard in a solid color. And I'm just going to pick some random, well not random, I always pick the same color, but some gray color. And that color is going to mask off all the artwork that's behind it. Um, then I'm going to go to stroke here and I'm going to turn off these stroke lines. I find it better to fill these insert marks with that same gray and turn off the stroke as well. So we now have this component um, that is ready to be used as a masking layer so we can see what the artwork is going to look like on a board. We've got a couple of things here. We, we can go to our layers menu and you can see currently there are no layers. This box down here on the bottom tells us that we're in the root 
or all of these items are in the root of our document. I'm actually just going to hit Control A to select all, and I'm going to hit Control X to cut. And then in my layers, I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call that uh, template. And then I'm now selected that. I'm going to hit Control V to paste. And now that template is in that particular layer. And because I like it aligned with my page properly, oops, I'm going to hit also either edit, is it object group or Control G to group all those parts. And then when I select them, they're all one thing. So I'm going to put them in the center of my page. And now I'm not going to touch that layer again. I can actually hit lock and now I can't move it. So that layer just stays where it's at. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to call that new layer graphic. You can actually put multiple layers in here for different components. Uh, it makes it very easy to select different components, but I'm just going to do one for now. And I want the graphic layer to be behind the template. Let's see if I can get it to do that. No, I have to use the little arrows there. There we go. So it's now behind it. So anything I put on that graphic layer is behind this masking layer, which can at any time be turned off so that we can print your artwork. So uh, with Inkscape, you can go ahead and import some artwork. I'm gonna go and find, uh oh, there it is, documents. Uh, we'll go to this demo video. And I'm going to import the different uh, components that I have for this video. This was kind of some uh, some tiki masks I thought were kind of kind of funny and interesting. And so I brought them in, scaled them way up. And first thing I'm going to do is go object ungroup. And now I can grab each one individually. I kind of like this guy. He looks really jolly. Um, let me, I want to scale them. I think they're a little too big for what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put him right in the middle of the board. And then I'm just going to grab a couple others. Maybe this guy here. And maybe, whoops. Well, that's kind of annoying. So I'm gonna zoom way out until I find where I was. And now I'm gonna zoom back in and zoom. I'm using the mouse wheel and the control key here. Um, it looks like I can't really get my favorite guy in the middle. So I'm gonna put him down here near the bottom. Put this guy up here, this guy up here in the tip, and this guy right here. And I'm gonna select all of them. And I'm gonna use this, where is it? Fill, selection, objects, layers, align and distribute over here. And I'm gonna center all of those on my page. And then I can do a, a distribute as well, which will evenly distribute them so I've got this kind of uh, um, totem pole looking looking thing going on here. And I think I'm going to leave that, but I think the white is a little boring. So I'm going to do, I'm going to delete these guys that I'm not using. I'm going to grab a couple here. Oops, that one and that, this one. And then shift, I'm gonna hit control C, control V. Now I've got two of them over here and I'm just gonna do something that just makes that white background not look quite so boring. Uh, first I'm gonna scale them to uh, 
about the size of the board. And then I'm going to go to this fill. Oops, I don't want to change stroke. Hit Control Z. I'm going to go to fill here. And what this has done is changed the fill color. So I could I could go with, oops, now I'm going white. Let's not do that. Now maybe we do want some red. Let's see what that looks like. So we can, I'm going to change the opacity and bring it way down and kind of put it behind that artwork. And I don't know if I really like that or not, but I can play with that some more. I could uh, make it kind of just a opaque looking gray. I just like something more than just that white. So we'll leave it like that. Then I'm going to throw a Donic logo in there. So I'm going to import some other graphics. And I happen to have this all logos file right here. So let's object ungroup all right and then i'm gonna i'm actually gonna start by deleting a bunch of the stuff i don't want right now i'm gonna take this here and i'm just gonna grab it rotate it and then i'm gonna drop it right along the edge right over here let's make sure i get that where i want it i think that's about right so i'm going to call that good um, from there i would just simply go file save as um, i would rename it to uh, top sheet graphic or something like that and that would be the file you would email to us um, I'm going to show you one last little thing that's important that I discussed earlier on in the video. I'm going to import an image. So let's import this photo here that I took uh, on a recent trip. Let's say I wanted to put that on top of the board. Um, I'm going to rotate it here like this. And I'm going to look at the size of my template. Oops, I don't have the template. Oh, that's right. It's locked. Um, let's see, what is the, here's layers. If I go here, unlock that and so select the template, I can see that it's 66 inches long. So I'll lock that again. Okay, so we'll scale this. Let's, uh, we, we want to lock the dimensions so it scales it evenly or uh, proportionately. And we'll uh, change that to uh, 66 inches. And then we can just drop it dead center on our artwork. And so let's, let's just imagine you were gonna use an image like this on your, on your graphic. Well, you want to know what the resolution is. And the way you're going to do that is if you select that image, you'll look down at the bottom, it's going to give you the pixel dimensions. And so if you pull up a calculator, you can look at it's 66 inches tall. So we want number of pixels per inch. Uh, so we're going to take this tall dimension, 9722 here. And we're going to divide it by 66 and we're going to see that we've got 147 dots or pixels per inch that's close enough to 150 that we're going to be just fine in reality you really just need to be above 96. Um, so you'd be fine on this you never want to go below 96 uh, pixels or dots per inch but this will work just fine so Use that tool if you're going to put a, a photograph in your artwork to determine what resolution that photograph is going to print at when we go ahead and print the graphic. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that video helpful and uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from you soon on your custom snowboard.